Alrighty, boys and girls, thanks for tuning in on Flippity Flip Flop Flip Class, the flipping class for Monday. I know you guys just had a test, and you're probably like, oh, I'm not going to do homework and things stuff, but don't worry, I'm going to keep it, you know, mostly kind of short, just a little introduction to the marine sediments. So, marine sediments, those are obviously sediments that are found, you know, underneath the uh, water in the bottom of the ocean area in the marine regions. What's really cool is based on the types of marine regions, like those three that we talked about from the test, we're talking like the uh, continental margin, talking about the deep ocean basin, talking about Sumid Ocean Ridge, you can actually see different types of sediments common in those different areas. But what's really cool is based on the types of sediments found in those areas, you can actually tell the geologic history of that area as well as the history, the biological history, the history of species diversity, the history of evolution. It's a really, really awesome information is stored at the bottom of the surface, mostly covering the abyssal plains. So let's get into it, shall we? First things first, what exactly is a marine sediment other than, you know, a sediment that's sitting at the bottom? Literally what it usually is is particles of rock and other uh, organisms. You know, they're probably not living anymore, but they used to be. It used to be parts of living things stuck down there, and they're deposited via severe this is special shit now sometimes they can contain little tiny protists called diatoms or radiolarians, and a lot of these are extremophiles, so we find some really cool ones uh, up on the continental shelf in tropical waters, but we find some really awesome ones as you get closer to the mid-ocean ridge. Problem with the mid-ocean ridge though, is it's got like, you know, the lava coming out all the time covering all the really cool sediments. But there's still some goodness in there. So let's look at a picture comes right out of your textbook. This is just a picture showing teeny tiny microscopic diatoms and radiolarians. You can see that some of them have some really cool patterns of symmetry. These are really, I mean, they're just beautiful. And we have a bunch of these marine sediment that Mr. Fry actually collected from all over the world that we're going to get to dig through and see how many of these you can find in there, which is really kind of cool. Literally, these are pieces of sediment What's neat is they come from microscopic, like shell parts of microscopic protists and other teeny tiny organisms that I mean you would never see, but they're also 100% rock, which is weird. So the types of sediment, they're classified by the origin that they come from. They all have the word genesis, which means a start. So then you just throw in your root words, there's lithogenesis or pterogenesis that, you know, started at rock, started at land. Biogenesis started as a living thing. Hydrogenesis started in the water. Okay, that one's weird, we'll get to that later. And then Cosmogenesis, Cosmo, I'm not talking about Cosmo Kramer, I'm talking about from outer space, man, like meteors and stuff and alien deposits, literally. Now all these are, like we said earlier, deposited via the suspension settling. What is really cool is most of the sediment, because it's so fine, because it's so microscopic, it's mostly hanging up here in the water region, and it can actually take on average 10 to 50 years for it to settle to the bottom. Just not even talking like for it to turn into sediment, I'm talking just for it to be deposited from here to there. It could take 10 to 50 years, and because the ocean has, you know, currents and stuff in it, a lot of these sediments can actually travel uh, up to 22,000 kilometers, which is just the preposterous amount of space to cover. So you can find things that came from the land really out in the deep ocean basin because they can travel those great distances. Now what's really cool is there are some sediments that are really, really heavy. Uh, the most heavy stuff is actually uh, feces, yep, feces sediments and especially ones from animals that are eating algae or eating protists that are up here, a little bit higher in the column. Yum, protist column. And those will sink to the floor uh, pretty quickly. I mean, we're talking about a 10 to 15 day descent to the bottom. So it's still, you know, you can get a little bit of movement. Remember, the heavier the sediment, the more likely that you'll find it right in that area. The more dense the sediment, probably the faster it will sink and the less time it'll uh, be hanging out in the water column. What's really cool is the pressure that the ocean is under actually helps to preserve exactly how the water column looks. So we can actually see uh, like a snapshot when you get into the, like if this is our stuff, if we get into the ocean floor and get into the sediment, you can actually see a snapshot of the column of water directly above it, exactly how it would have been 
once upon a time. All right, so what actually happens is then when it has been deposited, it goes through this process called lithification, which is literally, well, the process of being lithified, which is literally the process of stuff that was not a rock being turned into stuff that is a rock. Like if I went down to the bottom of the ocean and became lithified, I would be a rock now, not like a Mr. Patterson, but more like a statue of Mr. Patterson. A big part of that is due to the pressure, but also different chemical reactions that happen in the sea floor. They become sedimentary types of rocks. Plate tectonics can play a big role. You can metamorphose some of those. You can bury some of them. But what's really neat is we can actually find, uh, because of uplifting, because of the whole plate tectonic, that whole like continent moving idea, we can actually find marine sediments on land. And I'm not just talking like as a beach sand. Obviously, that's going to be marine sediment. I'm talking like all over is a place sediment 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 i'm talking marine sediment on tops of mountains i mean that's the whole reason why like we have shale here in ohio that's marine sediment those are sedimentary rocks deposited by the ocean that's full of all these like biotic creatures and that's what actually makes the natural gas and the oil and the other stuff that we've been going after for all these years i mean up up here not even not even close to the that ocean just up there i mean it's awesome and what's really kind of cool, and that's just the big stuff that got deposited, that doesn't even account for stuff that gets blown around. So here's a really good picture that actually shows you uh, prevailing winds sending teeny tiny pieces of quartz. Now quartz is not very water soluble, not really at all, only dissolves in really, really hot water. So you know, these tiny particles, and this is just stuff that's just been carried by the winds. Like literally, you can have sediments from over here in the Americas that can be carried by the wind, or sorry, over here in Asia, that can be carried by the wind and deposited on the west coast. And the same thing here, we've got the east coast of America, and we can deposit all that up in over in there. I mean, this is stuff that's from the land, it's pterogenous sediment that's carried by the wind. And then you can imagine how far it's going to be carried once it actually gets into the ocean. So it's a really cool and complex situation. Here's a table from the book. This is table 4.1 in the old edition of the book. I'm assuming it will be table 4.1 in the new edition of the book. But if not, you might want to check. It's definitely going to be chapter 4 because that's the sediment chapter. But it actually breaks down the different types of sediments for you really nicely and then gives you uh, a plethora of information. You definitely have things you need to know. You need to know uh, specific types of sediments. You definitely need to know this first column. Uh, you want to know what kinds of rocks, etc. they're made out of. You need to learn to use words like ooze, microscopic, macroscopic, silicates, stuff like that. That's the elements that have silica in them, by the way. You're going to need to know the sources, because when you know the sources, then you know where those things came from, then you know the geologic history, and then you want to know approximately where they're found. So really, uh, you pretty much need to know this whole table. So you've probably been wondering to yourself, with all the blowing of the sediment all over the place and the craziness and then the suspension settling and the 10 to 15 years of dropping to the bottom, how do we find this stuff? Well, we look for Marine Corps. And I'm not talking about like the USMC Marine Corps, I'm talking like we send a ship out sort of similar to an oil rig ship. And what we do is we send like a big old hose down to the bottom, down to the bottom, this is showing that it's cut off and drawn out to scale. And we stick it into a hole, and we literally has a drill on it, just drills down, grabs a chunk, uh, like a column of sediment, and just pulls it all the way back up to the ship. So literally we send down drilling to the bottom of the seafloor to investigate what we see. We're looking for cores, and literally it's like, you know, have you seen like those apple cores? You can stab an apple and pull out just the core, and it's like this cylindrical column of apple that you don't want to eat because it's got the nasty core in it. That's the same idea. You just stick it in there, and we get this nasty core of uh, marine sediment, and then you can look at it and see what's in it. So here's a picture uh, taken from one of the cameras. This is at the ocean floor. They're going to pop right into that little uh, loopy hole right here. And they're going to go in and they're going to get themselves some sediment. Here's another picture of some deep sea divers. They're doing a little bit of maintenance on the big old drilling thingy, which is right over in this area here. And again, they're getting some sediment. And then when you get the sediment, literally this is what they do. They take the sediment. It's preserved in these like metal tubes. They open the metal tube and then they meticulously pick through it for like ever and see what's in it. They sometimes burn some of it, break it up in little bits, destroy it by doing chemical tests and figure out, you know, just what was going on on the ocean floor. 
What's really kind of cool is you can actually see, due to some geological stuff, you can actually tell the age of the sediment based on uh, is it really chunky and stabby or is it smoother, is it better sorted. By sorting, think of our graded bedding. Are all the little things with other little things and the big things with other big things? Or is it all kind of mix mashed in together? The longer a sediment goes and sits at the bottom, the smaller it will be, the rounder it will be, the better sorted it will be. In addition to that, it also eliminates the silicates, eliminates the quartzy elements, and turns them into clays, which is just you know microscopic mashings of rock. So this question is, you know, who cares? Well, you should care because Earth's history cares, and you live on the Earth. It's a suspension of sediment. It takes very long time. And like we said before, you can literally see all the things that have been happening inside the world part area. Very important because it gives us more evidence for my favorite stuff series, the plate tectonics. But it also has been showing us evidence of past and present trends of the climate. It's not just about the, 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 the glacier, it's just about the ocean floor of people, seriously. We've actually seen evidence of not just our climate, past climates, three, four, five climates ago. We can actually track all the four ice ages before based on what we're seeing in the sediment cores, based on the types of rocks we see, based on the gases that are trapped in there, and based on the type of life forms that we find in there. What's really neat is you can see catastrophes. I mean, the marine cores associated with like Mount Vesuvius blowing up are awesome. And you see all this really good data where you can track circulation in the ocean. I mean, you can just tell what's been going on with this. You can tell that this used to be ocean, and we can tell what the climate was like, how long ago it was an ocean, and what sorts of things were living there, and how they compare to the things living in the ocean today. And so what that really does is it helps shrink this big picture of the ocean down to a smaller, manageable sizes that we can do quantitative data on and figure out, you know, what's been going on. I mean, it's, just, it's so awesome. It gives us a, not only an idea of the marine life, but it also gives us an idea of what was happening on the Earth's surface as well, which is pretty neat. Uh, you definitely need to read box 4.3 in your books that I know you guys totally took home. If you don't have it at home because, I don't know, you put it in your locker because, I don't know, you want to rip the book apart and then we'll glue it back together at the end of the year. You could also come in and get one from my room if you need to read it during study hall. And that, boys and girls, is the end. It's the end. Next week we'll talk about what we get out of these sediments and we're going to break down the different types of sediments. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to move on.